Hey guys, welcome back to No Catchy Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 59. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've made a new video. I think I put one out Saturday last week, so it's been a few days. Um, just to hop in real fast, I'm going to say that the reason for that is because we had a death in the family. If you're a member of the Facebook group, you would have known that because I posted it on there. I haven't had time to film or edit or anything, so this is the first time I'm getting to film since um, the funeral and all that. So all of that stuff's taken care of now, and I want to thank everybody who uh, sent thoughts and prayers our way and all that stuff so I, I just wanted to let you guys know that that's why I haven't put out videos I haven't disappeared or anything it's just um, you know I had to take take a step back to deal with home stuff uh, which is understandable I should hope <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be filming some videos today and hopefully get back to a regular-ish schedule <laughs> and um, yeah so let's just hop into here <laughs> I do have two finished objects and I'm only working on one whip right now if my face is red, it's because I just ran around the house cleaning up a little bit in the background um, to film. It is really gloomy. Let's see here. It's almost 5. It's about 20 to 5 here, so it's gloomy outside anyways because clouds. So the lighting may not be the best, but I've got to do with what I have. <laughs> Devin is outside with both the kids. I'm babysitting this week because school's out for um, autumn break or fall break, whatever. So they're out playing on the playground so that I can film. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the video. <laughs> First, I wanna say hi to everybody who's new. Uh, we've got some more new subscribers. And also on the Facebook group, we hit over 700 members. So if you're interested, you can hop over to the Facebook group and join it if you're not already a member. But if you are a member, you can go find one of the announcement posts that are pinned to the top because there is a giveaway right now going on until Sunday the 14th for a free ra Ravelry <laughs> pattern uh, to celebrate hitting 700 members over there. So hop over there if you want to uh, try to win a pattern. All right, let's just go into my finished objects. Like I said, I have two of them. Uh, one is a Halloween thing, because I've had like a thousand Halloween projects. And there's actually, I'm working on another one, and there's at least three more that I will be making par as part of cows. And then maybe that'll be all the Halloween crochet, and I can start Christmas crochet. Maybe some Thanksgiving. But the first one, um, I'll show you first with he's got a candle in him because <laughs> it's meant for a quart like mason jar uh, but I don't have any of those and my mom doesn't have any of those because she usually has a lot of jars but she has pints not quarts um, and I just happen to have this candle that kind of fits in there and I wanted to show you his shape so it is part of a crochet along that I'm participating in by the underground crafter um, I'll have that link below if you're interested and it's still got a few more weeks in it and you can go ahead and enter and win a lot of awesome prizes. They got a lot of prizes that are really cool. But this particular pattern is from Heidi Yates, which is Snappy Tots. And it's a free pattern on her website, which is snappytots.com, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, or it's a paid pattern on Ravelry. I think it's like $2, but it's a jar cozy. <laughs> he may be blown out because like I said, the lighting's not that good and he is made with Red Heart Super Saver Glow Worm. Because I'm running out of green. i got to get to the store and buy some yarn. I'm all out of spring green and the mainstays green, which is kind of like spring green, which is usually my go-to green for stuff like this. So I'm using glow worm because <laughs> I have some random balls left of it. But he's a Frankenstein monster. And um, I followed the pattern and put the bolts up here, even though technically they're supposed to be on his neck. So they should actually be down here. But I've noticed a lot that people are putting them on the top of his head. I'm not sure why. Because they're on his neck. <laughs> but... Um, this year marks the 200th anniversary of Frankenstein's monster, so that's why they're popping up everywhere. But he's super cute. He's got the bolts and his little eyes, um, have safety eyes, or I guess you could just make knots or uh, crocheted ones. He has a little purple nose and a smirk, and his hair, I don't know how you can see it, but there's texture there. His hair is a lot of, um, I think it's single crochets and triple crochets, so it makes it bumpy. And he's got a few different textures. Heidi loves making different textures on her patterns. She usually calls them sampler patterns. But like I said, he's got a big old candle in him. <laughs> but he is a jar cozy. And she has in the pattern, you can make a pint size or a quart. So that's what he looks like without anything in him. But yeah, I think this would be an easy pattern to tweak into other things. Wait a minute, did I show this last week? I might have shown this last week. I forgot. <laughs> well, if I did show this last week, here it is again. <laughs> I just had like a vague, like a flashback of me doing this already. Maybe he wasn't all the way done last week. But yeah, this candle fits in there pretty good. I don't know how big this candle is. Let me see. 
if you're interested. And it's an 18 ounce candle. I got this at Walmart, I think. No, I got this at Kroger. It was on clearance last, last after Valentine's Day, because it's like a Valentine candle. But it's an 18 ounce candle, if you're interested. <laughs> he fits in there. Obviously, I wouldn't burn the candle with him in there because of heat. But I just have him in there, you know, to hold his shape. And he's sitting up on my sound bar with the little ghost. I just think he's cute. I love the idea of him being a jar because you could put candies and treats and things in it and gift it or just have it sitting on like your counter for people to grab pieces of candy out of or bubble gum or whatever. Yeah, I think he's adorable. Mm. Oh, I forgot to say the yarns. <laughs> his body is Red Heart Super Saver Glowworm and Black. And then his um, features are all scraps of this. I know it's a Red Heart Super Saver Gray, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking it's like light heathered gray or medium heathered gray or something like that and then white and amethyst for his face and his mouth is just some black yarn all right my second um finished object is one that's been a whip forever <laughs> i would guess i would say that it was hibernating at one point and it was because it was a baby blanket that i started corner to corner with just some yarn that i got on clearance at Hobby Lobby and then I started going ham on fair projects so it kind of got put to the side but I went ahead and finished it this last last week sometime I think I mentioned it in the last video that I was working on it but um, I went ahead and finished it at my father-in-law's house because we were sitting over there hanging out so I finished the crochet part of the blanket then and then I did the border at home and uh, so it's just a good little baby blanket good size little I didn't measure it it's pretty big. I mean, I think it'd be good for the kind of blanket that you either lay on top of a baby while it's sleeping or you lay under it while it's laying on the ground getting tummy time. It's not like a blanket you could swaddle a baby in, but um, it's just corner to corner and the border is just a shell stitch that I did. I did one whole round of single crochet all the way around and then I did one whole round of... Um, I single crocheted, no, maybe I slip stitched. I slip stitched, skipped one, did five double crochets, skipped one, slip stitch all the way around. Just to make a cute little border. It's a little fuzzy because I washed it, so it's got a halo. It's nice and floppy now it's been washed. And it is Hobby Lobby's All of This Yarn Prince Turquoise Sky. This has two full balls and about half of a third. I didn't think it would take that much yarn, but I didn't know until someone told me. <laughs> I can't remember who told me, but I didn't know that decreasing a corner to corner took more yarn than increasing it. I think I accidentally moved the camera, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, and then someone told me that in like a comment on the on one of the YouTube videos, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll log that away. So I started decreasing before this first ball was gone, and it took the rest of the first ball and a whole second ball to decrease this blanket. It took way more yarn to decrease it than it did to increase it. I thought that was crazy. I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, I remember someone telling me that, but I wasn't expecting it was going to be that big of a difference. So I had to break into a third ball just to do the border, and... Uh, but it worked out good. So I've, I do have about half a ball of this left. I could probably make a baby hat or two out of it or a little amigurumi or something. So I did wind it into a ball and it's in my box of scraps <laughs> to use at a future date. But I love it. It's soft and fluffy. And I will be putting it up for um, a baby gift if someone has a baby <laughs> anytime soon. But yeah, it's just a regular corner to corner pattern. I didn't do anything fancy and there's no patterns to link to because it's just a stitch. <laughs> I saw my finished objects. Um, the even before uh, the death in the family, I was really busy doing other things, and I didn't get to crochet a lot. I was trying to finish up these items I have for crochet alongs, but I uh, I didn't really start a lot of new things. So I do only have one current active whip. I have a couple in hibernation that I may or may not ever finish. It's, this is in my bag. I'm only finished. I'm almost done with the head. This is part of a crochet along from Mary Smith on her Facebook group, which is called Made by Mary CAL. And um, I actually got this when I did the first one, which was the vampire that I showed last week. You, you, when you finish them, you get a free pattern from her. And I picked this pattern as my free pattern, and then it just happened to be the next crochet along. And it is her. Let me pull it so I don't lose stitches. It is her Frankenstein candy bowl 
super cute and so far I just got his head done almost done I'm, I'm decreasing it and then I'll have to stuff it and then close it and then I'm gonna make all the facial features facial features and that's what the week one of the cow is which is his head his eyes ears mouth tongue and bolt and then he's got like um, embroidered like uh, stitches all throughout his face you know because he's a monster it's falling apart <laughs> but that's week one and it's due this coming Saturday which I believe is the 12th um, and then it'll move on to another part of his body but yeah this is another green because I'm trying to use up these random scraps of green that I have before I go and buy more this one is called Red Heart Super Saver Tea Leaf which is pretty and then this is just black and uh, he'll have other colors on his face once I get to making his eyeballs and bolts and all that stuff. I think he's got super cute eyes and just the way she designed him is super cute. I'll pop up a picture right here. He's just adorable. He's going to be like this little amigurumi holding a bucket of candy. <laughs> and I'm going to get this done before Halloween because my mom, like I said uh, in one of my other videos, she's going to come to our house to hand out candy so I can leave our lights on while we're out trick or treating. So I'm going to have the candy in this bowl that she can hold or whatever, have sitting by her to give kids candy with. And I just thought it was so cute. I was hoping, you know, I'm thinking it's cute and hopefully all the people who see it will think it's adorable too. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a crochet along. And another, another crochet along that I'm working on, which is the Underground Crafter one, it's newest uh, pattern came out today and it's the second to last. There's this one and the next Wednesday another pattern will be released and that'll be the last one. So I'm looking really forward to finishing that and hopefully winning some prizes. <laughs> all right, that's all my active whips. Um, I do have another corner to corner blanket that now that I'm done with this one, I may pick it up and start using it as my car blanket and at people's houses as a blanket and all that stuff, just to try to get it done also for um, my gift pile <laughs> or to donate because we do have a pregnancy center here and I'm sure they would love to have some baby blankets and things like that donated to them. All right, I do have a few acquisitions. Um, I got a really cool one I want to show you that my sister made me. And I got some material and some random beads for stitch markers and stuff. And also got my knit crate this week, which I won't be showing in this video because I'm going to make a knit crate video. But it is a really cute color, well, really pretty color, like an elegant color. And it will be a giveaway. So keep your eyes out for that video so you can enter to win the patterns and the yarn that came this month through knit crate. Okay. The cool thing that my sister made for me, this has a real name and she told me what it was, but I don't forget what it was called. <laughs> but it's some kind of pin cushion. <laughs> it's got a fancy name. I'm thinking it's like a Dutch thing. I don't know. Don't ask me. Ask her. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. She made my mom, well, she made one a long time ago, a little tiny one. And my mom claimed it and then she ended up making a few others I think she made herself one and then she made my mom another one and she made her sister-in-law one and then I wanted one <laughs> so I looked for patterns on um, Pinterest and she she told me to look for them and tell me what they were because I never forgot what it's called to look up and when I found one that I wanted she would make it so she made me this okay this is cross stitch and I guess it's cross stitch with beads because it's got beadwork on it and it's on Ada cloth I think is what it's called and she dyed it it was originally white and I asked her to dye it like a green color to like resemble grass and I'll show you why okay I'll show you the back first because it's pretty but I want to show you the front it's the last it's got a cross stitch border and these little flowers are beaded I don't know how well you can see it but there's little globs of flowers and then the front which is really pretty have a little sheep on it and also beaded flowers. I don't know how she makes it this shape. I'm assuming it's squares that the way she sews it together is what gives it its shape. And then it's like cinched in the middle to give it a concave look. <laughs> and then there's a bead in the middle of it. So beautiful, I think. She did a wonderful job on it. I love this. Like, I love it so much that I don't even know if I'm actually going to use it. I think I'm just going to use it for looks. Because I don't want to be stabbing holes in it. Even though it has holes in it because it's Ada. But it's just so pretty. I think she could totally sell these. So pretty. Isn't that neat? All those beads and all that. And it only took her... 
like a little bit of time to make like she said she started it and then i feel like a day later she messaged me and said she was done with it i think that's so crazy and it's so pretty my sister hattie made this for me she has a youtube channel but she's not uploaded in forever even though i've been trying to tell her to upload hattie if you're watching this upload some videos people want to see it <laughs> but yeah that's my sister made me that and i love it uh i got a few acquisitions today uh just stitch marker stuff i got some what are these called uh it doesn't say oh, yeah lever back <laughs> earring thingies that i use for stitch marker these are gold because i have some other stitch marker supplies that are gold i've been using silver so i need to use up the gold and then i got these two things of beads just to use on stitch markers like as accents these are really pretty like these remind me like peacock colors because it's purples and blues and greens it's just really pretty beads and then the same with these, they're just like accent beads. I don't know how well you can see it, but they're colored and they got like little rhinestones, <laughs> kinda like little fake diamonds on parts of them. They're really pretty. And then I got a few other material acquisitions. If you're interested in bags, I've got a bunch on the sewing machine right now. I have been sewing like crazy. I have probably 20 half done. And then I got these, which will make two four six eight minus one because i'm keeping one so seven more right here but um i've got a lot of fall ones and if some more halloween ones about to come up i'm hoping to have them in the shop by whatever next weekend is let's see this coming weekend is the 13th and 14th so the one after that the 20s 20th and 21st i believe so i got some material at joann's yesterday we went to an eye appointment so i was in the town with the joann's and we grabbed some material where I grabbed some. Oh, I also got a book. I forgot to get that. I'll have to show that to y'all in a minute. But this is a yard of gobble to you wobble. <laughs> I thought this was cute. I don't know if anyone else would want to have a project bag out of this, but you know, worst case scenario, I'll make project bags and notion pouches. No one buys them. I'll just keep them in them or gift them. But I thought this would be so cute. So there's enough here to make two project bags and two notion pouches. So those will be in the shop soon. All right, this is more pop culture thing. So I got a Nightmare Before Christmas one. This is uh, gonna be two project bags and two notion pouches also. Super cute. And then for Harry Potter fans out there, let me make sure I'm showing it upside right. This is the houses in like stained glass. Again, this will be two project bags and two notion pouches. And I'll probably sell these ones in sets. So instead of being $20 for the project bag, $10 for the Notions pouch, I'll sell them in sets together for $28. And then the last one, this is the one that I'm going to make me a bag and Notion pouch out of, and then I'll sell the other one. So there'll only be one of these available. <laughs> because I love it. The Disney villains. The female ones, I guess, some of them. But Corella DeVille is like my favorite. Corella DeVille and Ursula are like two of my favorite Disney villains. And it's purple and black. It's just pretty. But yeah, those are about all the acquisitions, I think, other than the book. Let me go grab that. Okay. <laughs> I bought a book also. The books were 30% off. This one came to like 13 something, $14, we'll say. And it's got a ton of patterns in it. It's got 28 patterns. So that's a really good deal <laughs> if you divide $14 by 28. That's a really good deal. And they're cute. Oh, let me see what it says. It says it's called Cuddly Animals to Crochet by Lucia Forthman. I don't know how to say that right. It's got all kinds of animals in it. Let me see if there's a table of contents that's got like an image of a lot of them. It doesn't really, but it's got subcategories of forest, farm, Africa, Asia, Australia, South America, and water. And it's just got all kinds of Amigurumis. Here's a picture of some of them. It's got a, a cute little sheep. Let me find the sheep. Everybody loves sheep. Of course we love sheep because they, they're what started. There's the sheep. I'll probably make the sheep eventually. Just super cute animals in here. They had a bunch of the zoo amigurumis. Zoo Zoomagurumi, am I saying that right? Zoomagurumi books, but they didn't have the one I wanted, which I think is number seven. 
and it's the one with the seagull in it. I really want that little seagull pattern, <laughs> but they had a couple of them, and they didn't have the right one. I'd love to have all of them, though, because I love making amigurumi, so I'd love to have a bunch of books on hand just to grab to make random amigurumis with. Yeah, that's the last acquisition that I had this week that I know of that I can remember. I think that's everything. I guess we'll go into the life updates. If anybody's interested, you can stay. If you're not, I'll see you in the next video. But, um, life updates, I guess I would just, you know, it'd be about the funeral. It was today. Today's Wednesday the 10th. Uh, today's also Devin's last day of bereavement. He'll be going back to work tomorrow. He was a pallbearer, so he had to for sure go. I've fallen behind on Vlogtober. <laughs> I always fall behind on the vlog months. But something always happens. You know, this time it wasn't something I could have avoided. It was a, a death. <laughs> and um, luckily we did. Devin took off early Saturday night so that we could drive to Nashville. I live in Middle Tennessee, but I live about an hour and a half below Nashville. So uh, he took off work and came and picked me up. And then we went to Nashville. My mom watched Jesse because it was later in the day. Um, we wouldn't have gotten back till late, so we wanted him to stay somewhere, you know, instead of going with us. Um, we drove all the way to Nashville. We we visited his grandfather. The nurse there told us that he should have no problem making it through the night, and that it was after the you know the next day. It was you know any time they could happen any time. So we visited for about an hour and a half. And we decided we needed to go ahead and start heading home because it was late at night. And it was about 11 o'clock or a little after 11. I can't remember exactly. But um, so we, we started heading home. And I don't know if you know anything about our area down here, but it's really mountainy. There's lots of mountains. So there's really bad cell phone signals. So after we got about an hour into our ride home, maybe like 45 minutes, we finally hit an area where cell phone signals come back uh, in between mountains and we got a phone call that he had passed away. He evidently had passed away right after we left the hospital. So, uh, you know, it was sad. I didn't know him, but it was still super emotional. You know, I'm, I'm very empathetic, so seeing anybody suffer or sick or anything like that, just, it makes me sad, and I usually, I feel super emotional about it, which usually makes me cry, and I did cry that night at the hospital. Um, it's just sad when you see someone who's sick, you know. Especially because I experienced it firsthand with my dad. He had, my father passed away of esophageal cancer in 2013. Uh, he got diagnosed in March of 2012 and he died January 27th of 2013. He didn't even make it a year from his um, diagnosis. So I've seen someone suffer completely of cancer and die. And, uh, his grandfather didn't technically die of his cancer, but he died of pneumonia, and his body wasn't strong enough to fight it because of the cancer and stuff. So it it, it all comes down to cancer. <laughs> it was basically cancer's fault that he died. But um, you know, he was he had made his own sort of peace. So I've been told, you know, he wasn't talking when we visited him. He was out of it. But uh, we were told that he made his own peace with his own religion and all that. So. I'm sure that he's wherever he believed he'd be. <laughs> and um, Devin and I, you know, Devin took it okay. You know, he's obviously sad because his grandfather died, but it's, it's a good thing he's not suffering anymore, you know. So we did all the funeral stuff with everybody, you know, and we did, Devin went last night to the viewing. And then uh, today we went to the funeral, it was this morning, and it's a beautiful day for a funeral. <laughs> Um, I know it sounds weird, but it wasn't hot, it wasn't rainy, it was overcast, and it was in the 70s, it was just a nice day to have had to go through something like that. So, after we left the funerals, we went to get something to eat and all that, so now we're here, and they're outside playing, and I'm here filming. <laughs> I was crushing watching the kids play, and then I told Devin, I was like, I need to go film, because I haven't filmed <laughs> in like a, almost a week. So, they're out there still playing, I'm looking out the window, I'm sure you can tell it's right here, because I'm blue. <laughs> but, um... So yeah, that's about the only life update about that part, I guess. Uh, I also am babysitting this week because it is fall break here, uh, autumn break, however you want to say it. I'm pretty sure fall is a U.S. term, so it's autumn break for everybody else. Um, I had her yesterday through Friday, I'll have her, 
So that's cool. I actually like it when she's here because she helps a lot with Jessie. And then she's also just a little buddy. She's about the only person I know in her life that actually crochets. This stuff back here, all this yarn is hers. Well, it's mine. I gave it to her. But it's her crochet. She's making a baby hat. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it good, but it's a yellow one. Um, I just think it's cool to have a little crochet buddy. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's all the life updates. I can't think of anything else important. Tomorrow is Thursday the 11th. Yeah, and uh, that's the day I do all my running around, paying bills, getting groceries, all that fun stuff. I'll try to film some. I want to try to pick back up with my videos and try to get things back to normal around here. Uh, I'll have both the kids and my mom, because she goes with me most Thursdays just to help out with Jesse. So I won't be able to film them. Well, you know, Jesse I can film because he's my kid and my mom doesn't mind, but I can't uh, film her, obviously. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll try to film some stuff and vlog a little if I can. Friday morning, we might go to the train tales again. Jesse's really enjoyed that. He enjoys playing more than listening to the stories, but he does listen to the stories a little bit. That's just at a local um, train depot. Used to be like a real one, you know, that worked and was functional. Now it's just a museum. And our local TV station, which is PBS owned or run or whatever, which is local uh, programming, it's WCTE, I think. It's local to us here. <laughs> if uh, I don't know if any of you guys get that channel <laughs> or whatever, but for uh, here it's like Daniel Tiger comes on it. Um, author, I used to love author. What's that other? Mr. Rogers Neighborhood stuff like that. Those like family programs come on that, and plus local shows. Anyways, <laughs> um, they're the ones who like sponsor the train tales, and it's just. It's for preschool age kids and they just, they read a few books to them and then they do like an arts and craft thing. Like last week it was a coloring page and sometimes they hand out like that one day that we went two weeks ago and it was a little Daniel Tiger ears. They just do cute little things like that. It's just a community thing so that moms like me or dads can take their little preschooler out for an hour or so and just have them have interaction with other kids and all that. And Jesse seems to like it. He likes to play with the trains while the are little stories. And it's always fun to be at the train station because he loves the big train that's parked there. It's been there forever, <laughs> as far as I can remember. But yeah, I think that's everything. Now I'm just blabbering. I'm trying to look around. I got my knit crate sitting right here. I'll show you this. This this month, it came with this huge magazine. I think I counted seven patterns in this thing. But out of the seven patterns, only one of them is crochet. That kind of annoyed me. I do know that it is knit crate though. It is originally for knitters. And they just added crochet after the crochet crate flopped. Because apparently there weren't, weren't as many crocheters who wanted it. But um, I just kind of thought that was kind of bleh. That there was mostly knit patterns in it. But whatever. Maybe I'll learn to knit one day. I'd like to learn how to knit sweaters at least. And socks. Maybe one of these days. I can basically knit. I actually learned how to knit before I learned how to crochet. But it was just like basic stuff that I can barely remember. But yeah, so apparently it's going to start coming with little books and little magazines now. I don't know how often though. This says October 18. So I don't know if there's going to be one a month or like one seasonal. I guess if it's seasonal it would say autumn 18. I don't know. I wish they'd send us emails explaining that. I did get one email saying that we were getting a magazine, but it didn't really explain how often and how many and all that. But I did thought it was, I did think it was really neat and it is really high quality. But anyways, I'll talk about that in the Nick Great video. Um, so I guess that's everything I have to say about this one. If you stuck around this far, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Hit the bell if you want notifications when I upload and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.